Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Shall we do that in unison? Yeah, really. Good morning, everyone. Hello there. Good to have you. <laughs> yes. So it is, this is past July the 25th, 2021, in the year of our Lord. It is, and this is Pastor Don, mm -hmm. and I am Janie Seltzer, and we are broadcasting live here in Carlsbad, California. It is our great pleasure to represent Mr. Zig Ziglar in the spiritual spoke of his wheel of life. Mm. Hello, Jackie, I see you coming on. As you're coming on, if you would let us know who you are and where you are around the world. Hello, John, good to see you. Uh, let us know where you're from. And also remember uh, that we are, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at names and lost my train of thought. Oh, okay, I know what I was going to say. Um, we remember to like and share this video now on your Facebook page so that others can join us. We desire to inspire and motivate you in your life of faith. So hello, Jerry Jameson. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nettie. Yes. It is good to see our friends close by and far away. Hi, Janet. Good to have you today. Hello, Cheryl from South Africa. Thank you for telling us, Cheryl. Hi, Randy in North Carolina. Yes, mm -hmm. we love North Carolina. That's where we grew up. I Hi. think he's from Charlotte. Randy is. I think he's outside of Charlotte, but close. Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. I see someone from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, someone, Ward, I'm sorry. Atrayi. Yeah, hi, from India. Such a faithful listener. Thank you for being there. You know, um, the beautiful thing, hello, Stephen Brown. The beautiful thing about the internet is what's going on right now because we can gather around the fire of the love of God and we invite everyone into this space. No matter where you're from or what tradition you come from, you are so welcome to be here and to learn, perhaps. You don't have to agree. There's someone from Nepal and someone from Albania. Hello. Mm -hmm. And it is, yes, it is such a joy. It's our way. Uh, Abraham Lincoln said years ago, mm. we can either curse the darkness or light a candle of light. Mm. And each and every Sunday that we have uh, this opportunity is to light a candle of light of hope, of uh, grace, of mercy, of kindness, and most of all, of Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, Augustine said, and I've been using this last several Sundays, and I think it's appropriate, in things essential, unity, in things non-essential, freedom, mm -hmm. but in all things, love. Amen. So may we keep those essential things, the non-essential things, but in all things, show forth the love of Christ. Right, because we might disagree on some nuances of theology. That's not the point. No. We want to point you to the very Son of God, the Beloved One, who came to give His own life for our sins. And so let's turn our hearts and minds and souls to Him now as we gather around the fire of His love with your palms up if you feel comfortable. Holy Father, we thank you that we can come together in this space. Hmm. Thank you that you welcome us. Your arms are wide open to us. And you say, come unto me. As you spoke through the words of your only begotten son, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in spirit, and you will find rest for your souls. Holy, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would pour your rest and your peace and your comfort upon all the listeners right now. Come Holy Spirit. May we breathe in your presence. Breathe out our anxieties and our fears. And breathe in your grace your peace, your mercy, your healing. We pray that you would lay your hand of healing upon all those who suffer right now. For you are the great physician. You are the healer. Come heal your people, Lord. Thank you that Jesus made a way for us into your holy presence, Father. And we come covered by the forgiveness, by the blood of Christ, who died so that we might live. 
thank you, Jesus. Help us to remember that you are the living Christ. You are right here, right now, very present Lord at our right hand. As we say together the family prayer, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, your sacred presence. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And let us not yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's good to be back. I have been away for a couple of days. I couldn't do my garden devotional because I was in Destin, Florida with, a, um, with Howard Partridge, a partner of Tom Ziegler, and it was an excellent conference. But I have something uh, that I'd like to uh, bring into our consciousness right now. Um, it was a wonderful conference. But there is no place like home. And it felt so good to wash off the, the, the airplanes and the, the crowds and the, the feeling squeezed like a sardine uh, in tight spaces and airports and such. And be washed and cleansed and be able to feel refreshed, even if my suitcase hasn't arrived yet. Yep, that's right. They said they'll get it to you before Christmas. Yeah, exactly. That was a bit startling. But you know what? That's exactly what Jesus does for us in this passage this morning. He wants to give us a bath. He wants to wash away all the impurities because he has done um, uh, uh, just a marvelous thing to describe in very simple language all of the ways that God blesses us. And, and now he digs in. He had said, God blesses those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, Jesus digs in because he knows that purity of heart is not an easy matter. And so, as he continues in the Sermon on the Mount, he looks out at the crowd and he really begins to lay it out. And where he begins to lay it out is in terms of our heart. That's why it all starts with the heart. And that all starts in our relationships with other people, not to mention our relationship with God. And so um, he, he, we, we're going to dig in. And if you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 21 and going through verse 26. Put on your seatbelt and let's get, a, let's get a nice hot shower together in the presence of his word. But and your seatbelt will get wet then. <laughs> well, I guess I used pet, two bad, two analogies, didn't it's I? It's all right. Well, let's just focus on seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a hot shower here, whether I have a seatbelt on or not, right? Okay, here we go. You have heard that it was said to, the, to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. I'm at verse 21 in Matthew 5. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out 
until you have paid the last penny. Okay, is that a hot shower or what? Yeah. <laughs> it's a hot shower. With or without the seatbelt. That's right, with or without the seatbelt. Jesus really, really begins with some tough language because he cares about us. He wants us to be with him in eternity. And he looks not at the outside, but he looks at the heart for he was and is the eternal God. Uh, the, here's the problem, folks. Let me just start and then I'll turn it over to Pastor Don. This verse came to my mind very deeply as I read these words. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17, 9. And that's where I think we'll begin. The heart is deceitful and desperately sick. And that also can be translated desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Well, the answer is given in the next verse, verse, but I'll hold on to that for the moment. Go for it. Okay. So, here's what the Lord, he answers his own question. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to the fruit of his deeds. That's verse 10 of Jeremiah 17. Yes, it is. So, first he asks the question, who can understand this deceitful and sick heart that we all have in our bodies? So those who say that man is inherently good, well, that's not the biblical view. That's not the view that Jesus held. And that's why he speaks so sternly. That's why he, he brings us to an alert attention when he says such powerful and riveting words as threatening even the fires of hell. You see, sometimes we have to use strong language to get the attention of our listeners. And Jesus certainly did that. Just a little dig in on that. I found it very interesting that the word search means to examine thoroughly. And test means to prove as metal is proved. And there's so many verses about that. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. Psalm 66, 10. And then Job 23, 10. But he knows the way I take. When he has tried me, I will come out as gold. You see, that's where Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to come out as gold. And he has, he's starting with some strong language to talk to us about our deceitful and sick hearts. One of the powerful um, emphasis of Jesus throughout the whole Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, is the interior life and how much, uh, it's not just simply the exterior life, uh, but the interior life. As I talked about last Sunday, pay attention to your soul. And, and Jesus, in, in, in this first area of, uh, after he's done the Beatitudes and then he's cast the vision about being uh, salt and light, he now says, okay, Jenny used the word dig in. Mm -hmm. you know, for the building to go higher, the foundation has got to go deeper. Mm -hmm. And so he's letting the foundation go deeper. He says, you know about murder, mm -hmm. but I tell you, if you have anger in your heart, mm -hmm. And so what he's doing, he's going into the area that uh, people could say, well, I haven't committed murder. Mm -hmm. I haven't shed blood. But you have been angry at others. Mm -hmm. And as Janie said so powerfully, that we're all sinners. We're all mm -hmm. born with selfish, independent nature, S-I-N. We're all born with shallow, impulsive, narcissistic ways. And so in that sin nature, the incredible demands of Jesus, okay, his radical righteousness is that you must be not only without murder, but without anger. Mm -hmm. and, Especially the anger that's being described here. Yeah, anger a, is not a sin in itself, correct? Right, there's righteous anger and unrighteous anger. Yes. 
and in this unrighteous anger where it's self-motivated, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, selfish desires, it's all about my, my image, image management, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. But, but in this, is, it, it's, it's a powerful statement because it's the first of six of them where he's going to say, you have heard, you have, you've received the teaching of the ancients, but I say to you. And why this murder, through, uh, he cast the stone first down on murder, is because the Pharisees and scribes and teachers could say, well, we've never committed murder. Mm-hmm. He cuts through the self-righteousness by having anger mm-hmm. is just as much as murder. Mm-hmm. We know in real life that when you murder someone, there's consequences of that. And you, you could not only be incarcerated, but could be uh, you know, serving the rest of your life in prison. However, from a spiritual viewpoint, from Jesus and his ethical standard, he's saying, even if you have anger in your heart, you have committed murder. Mm-hmm. Sort of heart murder, right? Yeah, heart murder. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're sitting there and saying, well, who, who, can, who can make it? Mm-hmm. You know, and in Matthew 5, 48, put that address down. Mm-hmm. Matthew 5, verse 48. Mm-hmm. Be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mm-hmm. There it is in the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is giving the impossible. You can't be perfect. The only way you can be perfect is through the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. The radical righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. And His standing between you and and the God of of holiness and judgment. And and saying, I don't have perfection. I don't have uh, a clean slate on anger. Yes, I may not have murdered, but I have committed anger that would be justifiably in God's eyes like murder. Mm. And so where do I go? I go to Christ. I, I have the only place of, of, of rescue mm-hmm. is Jesus mm-hmm. because I can't do it. <laughs> Essentially, he's calling them to come to him, isn't he? By To crash. Uh, yeah, crash. Like, wow. Okay, so these are the consequences. I'm dealing with this and this is impossible. Help. He's asking the people to cry out for help, essentially. Mm -hmm. Help, help. And that's what we want you to hear. That's what we need to hear. Lord, I need help. Will you help me? I can't do this. I can't live the way- This is impossible. It's impossible. I can't be, I I, I I can't can't live up to the standard. And that's exactly the point. You know, I think it's interesting that Jesus would say, you have heard it said, mm-hmm. but I say, and the reason he said he, that he emphasized you have heard it said is like you say, Don, the scribes and the Pharisees were the, were the highly educated ones yeah. and they would, and the righteous ones, and the righteous, according yeah. to their yeah. definition, the veneer, right, 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 right. According to their definition. And they would teach the people and the people were not, um, you know, uh, that educated in terms of reading and writing. So they had to depend upon the scribes and the Pharisees to not only teach them the law, but to interpret the law. And Jesus is stepping into this scene and saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, we ha- we're, you've taken it, scribes and Pharisees, to a place that doesn't go deep enough. You know, it, it, he actually takes us deeper into the heart. That's why it's all about the heart. He's saying, you know, you make it external. I'm going to go internal. You talk about, you know, outward, the way we uh, treat others outwardly. I'm going to talk to you about how you feel towards others. What is in your heart that is simmering? That's the kind of the word that came to me. What's simmering in your soul? What grudge do you hold against others? The um, raka, you fool. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, yeah, but I. You are. Oh, sorry. I'll stop right there. Okay. Um, I, I think that when you, we come to this area of anger, everyone struggles with it. Mm-hmm. Some more than others. But the point is, anger is just part of our humanity. So Jesus is hitting upon this with going for murder, and Jesus and Janie has explained it well that. They were there was five, there was no common scriptures there was no distribution of the word of God so Jesus became the the incarnation of, of God mm-hmm. and and his words uh, that's why they said after the end of mm-hmm. Matthew seven he spoke with such authority mm-hmm. well of course he did he had a compelling call he raised the bar and he had them go pay attention to their soul 
And so in this, it, uh, the, the, all of us in this stew, mm -hmm. okay, uh, st stew of frustration and aggravation and, and, and you know, and, and we're vexed on the inside because of, of, of the anger we may have um, here and there or maybe many, many a time. Mm -hmm. Here's what uh, Brene Brown says. Mm -hmm. Words, period, so powerful, period. They can crush a heart or heal it. Mm -hmm. They can shame a soul or liberate it. They can shatter dreams or energize them. They can obstruct connection or invite it. Mm -hmm. They can create defenses or melt them. Mm -hmm. We have to use words wisely, indeed. Mm. Well, the, uh, life and death is in the power of the word. Uh, it's interesting you should uh, quote Brene. Um, when I was at the conference, um, Howard Partridge said, you know the, the expression, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never harm me. He said, there's never been a bigger lie. Words are the power that harms people. And sometimes uh, those words are spoken verbally, um, but sometimes those words are spoken internally. People can have a smile on their face, but poison in their soul. And so we have to, we have to know that Jesus is the one who sees the heart. Jesus is looking at your heart and my heart and Don's heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus sees right through. He penetrates to what we're really made of. In this passage, Matthew 5, 26, uh, 21 through 26, uh, th there seems to be a stair step where Jesus is saying, uh, if you if you call a person Raka, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and what I had in my studies, Janie, yeah. was that Raka, yeah. uh, used in, uh, uh, it's an Aramaic word for empty-headed, okay, uh, it could be also numbskull, nitwit, blockhead, bonehead, jerk, brainless idiot. Correct, and the, when I was studying the word, uh, um, what, what this actually s describes, yes, those are literal definitions, but it describes a malignant scorn. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it, there's a malignant scorn. Contempt. And I like that because we're all scared to death of cancer, right? Nobody wants to get cancer. But you know what? There's something malignant that may be in your soul that is far more dangerous than, than physical cancer. It is, it is something that will destroy us it, uh, eternally. Um, and that's what we need to be hearing. The other term, fool, uh, comes from the Greek word moros, M-O-R-O-S, mm -hmm. which we derive moron, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but the meaning did not involve one's IQ, but rather one's moral condition. Mm -hmm. it's, it was applied to those who denied God's existence, and as a result, fell to further evil. Mm -hmm. Psalm 14.1 says this, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Mm -hmm. One commentator, A.B. Bruce, brings it out this way, really insightful. Raka expresses contempt for a man's head. Mm. You're stupid. Mm. Moros ex expresses contempt for a man or woman's heart mm. and character. Mm. You scoundrel. Mm. Uh, so these two words together mm. of contempt for their head, contempt for their heart, as said by Michael Card, uh, the cousin to this type of contemptuous anger is animosity, malice, hostility, malevolence, wrath. Uh, it's it's pretty serious. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. uh, it's pretty dark. Yeah. And destructive. Right. Right. You know, um, the people of Israel at that time had fierce enemies, and the enemies were the were the Roman government, the soldiers that mistreated them, that overtaxed them. Um, they had politically as bad of a situation as anyone could have. And yet here's Jesus talking to them, to the people of Israel about their hearts. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that Jesus is, is talking about just their relationship to one another? Or is he talking about their heart 
in all areas. And I think that we need to hear this because we can get so caught up in the things of the world, in the politics of the world, that we are exhibiting this same malignant scorn towards our political enemies that Jesus was talking about. I don't think he's drawing any lines in the sand and saying, well, this is how you treat your brothers and sisters, but you, you can go ahead and treat, you know, and hate and have this malignant scorn for your enemies. I don't think so, because he later says, bless your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. And I hope that people can hear this. You say, well, how do we protect ourselves? We, we, those who are Christ followers belong to the kingdom of God. We can't forget that. And if we are Christ followers and belong to the kingdom of God, then our attitude will be praying, not scorning, but praying for our enemies. The protection we have on your point, Janie, yes. is from God. Yes. God is our protector. Exactly. He's our refuge. He's our stronghold. He's our safe place. Uh, the, the, what Jesus was cutting deeper, not only about the murder, he goes from murder to anger. He goes from anger to pride, mm -hmm. to spiritual smugness. Mm -hmm. You look down and call them raka. You look down and call them fool. How dare you do that? Mm -hmm. because you don't even see the one finger going out, you have three fingers coming back of pride, of selfishness, of ego, mm -hmm. of, of what you can do to, to uh, boost uh, your reputation and your name. Mm -hmm. Interesting to me what uh, uh, Max Planck says. Max Planck is a neuroscientist and he has uh, done studies on neuroplasticity and uh, new ways of thinking and uh, attitudes. Quote, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Amen. Amen. When you change the way you look at things, okay. The things you, so you look, look at, at change. change. Yes. In other words, when you change how you think, mm -hmm. you can change how you feel. And it all starts with the heart. Yes. If you're not willing to be open to letting God change you from this malignant scorn or contemptuous anger, then I'm sorry. You put yourself on thin ice. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, as we see in verses 25 and 26 of Matthew 5, there's divine punishment. Mm -hmm. Because he, he's saying, this is serious. Mm -hmm. If you have the heart of Jesus, you will be malleable, you will be teachable, you will be open You'll be willing to say, Lord, I want to change. I don't like this anger. I don't like this scorn that's coming out of my mouth. I don't like this passive aggressive uh, ways that I sort of say hello to somebody, but afterwards I, I scoff at them. Mm. The spiritual smugness God sees. Mm. Mm. And God will have his way. Yes, he will. Ken Blanchard says this. There's a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in doing something, you do it only when it is convenient. When you're committed to something, you accept no excuses, mm. only results. Mm. I like that. I do too. You know, um, at the conference, um, Dr. Carolyn Leaf spoke at the conference I attended, and she would agree completely with Dr. Plank. Mm. In fact, what she had to say was very visual. I like this. If this, you can wrap your head around this. It certainly helped me. And that's funny that I would say wrap your head around this because her point was, we think that the brain controls everything, but actually the brain does not control everything. The mind controls everything. And so she said every thought is, is a physical presence in the brain. And if we're thinking, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, is there any excellence, is there anything worthy of praise, which is exactly what the Apostle Paul says to the Christians. Think about these things. Now here's what happens. If we are thinking um, according to the mind of Christ, if we're thinking about people and situations, responding as he would respond, being uh, practicing um, what he has taught us how to live and how to act towards others, what we're doing through our thinking is that we're growing trees in our brain. 
And if so, if it's positive, it's a, they're green trees. But if we're if we're dwelling in the thought life with scorn and bitterness and hostility. And, and hostility, then what we're putting in our brains are toxic trees. And she said, if you could just go above your brain and like a helicopter and look down at your brain, you'll see a forest. And she's, she's talking in terms of the actual structure of the brain. And you can see in the brain, this has been shown in science, now it's possible to see these things, that the dark, there are dark areas of the brain that are full of malignancies of thought. And there are, there are green areas of the brain, and they're literally not colors, of course, but there's the, the toxic brain, and then there's the healthy brain. And all of it originates in our, th in our thought life. So if you're filling your life with the latest news constantly, all day long, if that's all you're listening to, is what's happening in the world, all the terrible things, all the, all the bad news, if that's all you're being, you're feeding your mind, guess what you're planting in the forest of your brain? You see, we need to take responsibility. Jesus calls us to take responsibility for our thinking. And he did that because he loves us. He wants us to live healthy and whole lives. We need to provide space for God. We need to have more uh, opportunities for calmness, turning off the television, turning mm -hmm. off the, the uh, smartphone, turning off the, uh, the radio, whatever it may be. As you said, the toxicity mm -hmm. just continues to invade our soul mm -hmm. and, and fracture us. Mm -hmm. It leaves us with a, a sense of being, a, uh, what is it, disintegrated. Yes. See, integrity is the public self and the private self. And when a person has integrity, they're integrated, mm. public mm -hmm. and private self. Mm -hmm. When they don't, and there's a bifurcation, when there's a chasm between the public self and the private self, and that uh, division there, they're disintegrated. Mm. And, and Jesus goes on in this passage, and he talks about two areas. He talks about uh, regarding uh, worship, mm. and he talks about the area of, of uh, legal situation. Mm. And he does both of these because he's trying to just, uh, I, I guess you'd say, uh, uh, clamp down mm -hmm. further and further mm -hmm. and further. Mm -hmm. in, in the in Matthew uh, 5, it says, So if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come. And offer your gift. Mm -hmm. You see, they were in the court of the Gentiles. Court of the Gentiles, court of the women, mm -hmm. they're in the temple, court of the men. And beyond was the court of the priests. Mm -hmm. And so in this offering of the sacrifice, uh, which uh, priests could only be in the court of the priests, the worshiper is standing at the threshold of the court. And there in a moment's notice, a prompting of his heart, he realizes someone has something against him. And a brother, some would say it's for everyone. Uh, I'm more comfortable with the fact that of, of the family of God. But the point of the matter is, it's a spirit of reconciliation. Yes. A desire to make amends, mm -hmm. whatever they are. Mm -hmm. And so it's far more important to be reconciled to your brother than to fulfill the external duties of worship. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus is saying. That's very good. It's far more important to be reconciled with your brother or sister uh, than to uh, fulfill the external duties of worship. Worship is merely a pretense if we have offended others in such a way that they're holding grudges against us. How many times have you gone to a worship service and they're in the beauty and, and, and touching uh, tenderness of, of the songs and, and just the being with God's people and yet you have a grudge against someone or you know someone has a grudge against you? Jesus is saying, hey, if, you're, if you have a grudge against someone, you're guilty. Mm -hmm. Go reconcile. Mm -hmm. If someone has a, a grudge against you, you're innocent. Now go and be reconciled. If you can. If they are so adamant and so stubborn and so insistent about their uh, holding on to their stones, right. 
There's nothing, nothing you do, but you at made least the you make the effort. You made the I like, effort. I like that. Yeah. Spirit of reconciliation. Paul made it clear that as far as it's possible with us, right. Romans 12, Romans 12, we, we reconcile, we make peace, but yeah. it's not always possible, but we have to have that spirit of reconciliation. And God sees your heart and he saw that you made the attempt to try to mm -hmm. build a bridge with that man mm -hmm. or woman. Mm -hmm. And because you did, God is pleased. Mm -hmm. I like what Frederick Buechner says. What deadens us most to God's presence within us, I think is the inner dialogue that we are continuously engaged in with ourselves. Mm. Say that again, that's very good. What deadens us most to God's presence mm. within us, mm. I think is the inner dialogue that we are continuously engaged in with ourselves. Mm. The endless chatter of human thought. Mm -hmm. I suspect that there is nothing more crucial to true spiritual comfort than being able from time to time to stop that chatter. <laughs> so important. You'll never reconcile. You'll never go to a person to make amends. You'll never humble yourself and say, you know, I, I feel like there's something wrong between us in our relationship because there's so much chatter. Mm -hmm. There's so much noise. And, and because of that, if you want to say emotional or spiritual chaos, you just keep on going and keep on rushing around here and there, but you don't, you're not still and you don't listen to what God's heart is for you. And we make excuses, don't we? Well, I was going to do that, but we make excuses. And Jesus is watching and, and, and he knows if we're serious in our intent or if we're just playing games with God. I, I like a quote that I came upon about this issue of, of reconciliation or not having re a spirit of reconciliation, that we make ourselves unfit for communion with God. We make ourselves unfit for communion with God. So we might physically be present, but we're not really communing with God if we're, if we're absolutely hardened on the inside. Um, others may not see it, but God sees it. That's what I think, friends. Please hear us. God sees the heart. Man sees the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. And he wants your heart to be pure so that you may see him. He wants you to be clean, to have that refreshing inner wash of the Holy Spirit. And, and that, that requires two things, a spirit of, of repentance, but then action. It's both, it's action. We have to act on our repentant heart. Yes. The, the next item, we had the worship, Jesus used the next example of, of the court case, the legal situation. Mm -hmm. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Mm -hmm. Truly, I, want, I say to you, you will never get out, uh, get out until you have paid the last penny. I, I guess if I had to put it in one sentence, God will not let you get away with your sin. Mm -hmm. God knows your heart. God knows your relationships. God knows your circumstances. God knows your emotions. God knows you. Mm -hmm. He designed you and created you. You are made in his image. And by the grace of God, through Christ, you have been redeemed. And if you say you have the heart of Jesus, he says, you need to get this dealt with now. Don't wait. <laughs> Don't wait. Come to terms quickly with your accuser. Yes, quickly. While you're going with him. Yes, what he's saying is similar to the worship, uh, but hey, because the court system is, if you, if you hand, because while you're going with him to the court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard. In other words, there gets to be a point where you, uh, you get to a point of no return. Yes, yes. And if you do, it's nobody's fault but your own. You know the person that had a grudge against you. You know the person that there was uh, icy relations with. You know how you felt about that person. If you were at a gathering, whether a family reunion and you didn't really want to see or talk to that person, or whether it's a business gathering, you didn't want to really see or talk to that person, 
uh, or it could be even in a church context. But mm -hmm. the point of the matter is, or it could be a, a July 4th picnic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gathering of the neighbors. But the point is, God knows your heart. Mm -hmm. And he says, you're supposed to be salt and light. You're supposed to be different and distinctive. You're supposed to rise above it. You're supposed to be able to have a transcendent perspective. And if you can't, maybe, just maybe, you don't have the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. All I know is this. You know, and looking at various commentators, this doesn't seem to be talking about a man or woman's salvation. Mm -mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, about the judge and uh, put him in prison. What this seems to be talking about is God's discipline. Mm -hmm. And as I said a moment ago, is that God will not let you get away with your sin. Here's Hebrews 12. You can write down this address, 7 through 11. As you endure this divine discipline, mm -hmm. remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It is painful, exclamation point. Mm. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained by it. Mm. I have an acrostic for trust, T-R-U-S-T. T is teachable and transparent. R is reliable. U is understand others first, in other words, empathetic, empathic rather. And S is secure in your core, we would say in Christ. And then T is thankful. Are you a trustworthy person? Are you a man or woman who is transparent and teachable, reliable, understands others first, secure in your core, secure in Christ, and then T, thankful? Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you say, hey, Don, I don't have many of these letters I can put my arms around. Mm -hmm. Well, all I'm asking is if you have the heart of Jesus, ask him to change you. Mm -hmm. Ask him to change your thinking, your stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. Ask him to remake you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Ask him to give you a, a vision of what you can be doing in the remaining days and months and years that you have of touching people's lives with kindness and care mm -hmm. and compassion. Amen. And so it all begins with, if, if you don't want to be dragged to court, as Jesus describes, with severe consequences, then instead you take the position of Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know me. Ask him, friends. That's verse 24? Yes. Okay. Act 23. At, um, Psalm 139, 23. Search me, O oh God. Invite God yeah. to search you. Don't wait. You know, you may say, well, I don't think I hold any grudges. I don't think there's anyone I haven't forgiven. I don't think there's anyone that has a problem with me. Well, ask God. Search me. Search me, O oh God and know me. And then um, Psalm 26, 2 says, prove me, O Lord, and try me. There's that same testing word, like in a fire. Test my heart and my mind. Well, like Don just read, discipline is painful. We don't like to, I mean, this is not something any of us really look for, is a, is a, is a message on um, you know, what might be um, toxic in our souls, but you know what? It, it, it's cleansing, and, and there's nothing like a good cleansing. It's painful, but it's good. Everyone wants to run and hide from what's difficult these days. We want you to go forward. We want you to face forward. We want you to call forward. Abba, Daddy, please, Test me and prove me. Show me if there's any wicked way in me so that I might be cleansed. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, Psalm 51. Um, the psalmist knew. Um, the prophets knew. Um, Jesus knew. The disciples knew that this is a critical part of being a true person of faith, not being 
a, a superficial pretender. Right. Um, and that's what we want. Not into image it's, management. Right. Don't be a pretender. Right. Well, and, and a hypocrite. Right. Uh, a spiritual hypocrite. Right. Because you're on the outside one way, but on the inside you're different. Right. Uh, the um, acrostic I gave you last week of pray, P-R-A-Y, mm -hmm. it all starts with passionate love. It all starts with an intimacy. It all starts with a desire uh, to draw closer to him. If you don't have that passionate love, mm -hmm. then you need to be careful. You could become like the scribes and the Pharisees and, and the teachers of the law, where you're cold on the heart. Mm -hmm. It all starts with a love relationship. Mm -hmm. Do I receive his love and let him change me from the inside out? And then I fall more in love with him. Mm -hmm. Repent. Repent is where it's simply, and I said this last week, where you don't want to break God's heart. Mm -hmm. It's confession. Yes, it's, uh, it's remorse. It's contrition. But it's, it's, it's this relationship where I don't want to break your heart anymore. I don't want to disappoint you. I, I take full ownership of my actions and my sins. And this repent ties in with other people. People you may have had a grudge against. People you may have had a rift with. People who may have something against you. Lord, I repent of my sins of relationships where I've hurt people. I've let them go. Uh, by, by the wayside mm -hmm. because of my intentional negligence. Mm -hmm. I have, I've, sadly, that relationship has gone by the wayside. Or, or you might have cut people off. Um, just get them out of your life because they right. aren't, uh, they aren't your, you know, you don't want them in your life. You just want to throw them away. Don't throw people away. Do you want to be thrown away? You know, the basic, the basic understanding of love is to, Treat others as you would have them treat you. We forget the basics, don't we, friends? Right. We forget how, how simple it is, and yet how hard it is to follow through. Um, it, it's simple, but it's not easy. But Jesus never said it was, and that's where we call upon him. You know, Don, I came upon a um, couple of verses in Zechariah that I, I found... Um, very interesting. We don't turn to Zechariah very often. Zechariah 13 is a chapter that's pointing towards the coming of Christ and the end times. And there's, it's talking about the judgment and the groups of people that have not turned their faces to God, but then this one third that has. And I want you to hear the words of Zechariah 13, 9, because I think they're beautiful and it's where I hope you want to be. I will bring that group through the fire and more than pure, I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, these are my people and they will say, the Lord is my God. Hmm. Wow, I love that. Yeah, beautiful. I love that. So is that what you want? Do you want to truly be hear God say, the, you are my person, and you respond back to him, and you are my God. That's the goal of the spiritual life, to know, to know, to know you belong to the family of God. He knows you by name. He's, he has his name, your name, writ carved in the palm of his hand. You don't have to be afraid of the judgment. You don't have to be afraid of what happens after you die. You are confident that you have walked in the path that Jesus walked. You have walked in the path of peace. You have walked in the path of love. You have walked in the path of joy. Isn't that what you want? And when you don't walk in the path of love and joy and the others, I, others that Janie mentioned, you ask for forgiveness. Yes. You, you repent, okay? But repent is not just vertical. Mm -hmm. Repent is horizontal. And these relationships are problematic. I mean, they become, as Janie said, poisonous. They become toxic and they become difficult, but they become character calls. That's how you can look at them differently. Mm -hmm. They're character calls from God to grow your heart and your soul. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing too is ask, uh, P-R-A-Y, 
Passionate love, repent, ask. We've mm-hmm. gone through that last week of asking uh, with an earnestness. And, and then we, Y is yield. We should tell them, if you miss the message, Don's referred several times to last week. Right. If you miss the message, you can go on YouTube to Janie Poet, J-A-N-I-E, Poet, and you will see the ar- the archive of all of our messages, and you can see what last week's That's message. That's the 18th. That's right. Your last loss week. will mean gain. Yes. Okay, and then why is yield? Surrendering to God's will, to God's ways, and uh, asking for the heart of, of Jesus. I, when I think about Jesus and his teaching on Matthew 5, 21 through 26, uh, I'm struck with, when I hear the word anger, mm. okay, I, it's like a, a magnet, that, uh, and I'm a piece of metal, and it's drawing me to Luke 15. Mm. I just want you to hear this, because this, to me, uh, this, the, this embodies what anger is all about. Mm. Not just simply superficial anger, not just cosmetic or external, but of the heart, mm. there was a murderous spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, his older son was in the field. You know about the younger son. This is Luke 15, the, the, the parable of the waiting father. Okay. So and know the, it as the prodigal and, son. Yeah, and the younger son comes home, and he's embraced, and he's asked, he's got a repentant spirit, and, and, uh, and God, uh, the father, embraces him, puts a robe and ring and uh, uh, sandals on him and, and has a feast. Uh, my son who once was dead is now alive. My son who once was lost has now been found. Here's verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. All right, to do this didn't happen spontaneous. This was several days preparation. So the music was the, get the musicians there, the dancing, uh, the preparation. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come because he's received and because the father has received him safe and sound. Your father's killed the fatted calf. They're having a feast. A major feast. <laughs> We're talking about the, the barbecue of all barbecues. And this takes time to prepare the meat, to have the, sm- the aroma that's going throughout, and the cooking, and the festivities, and the, uh, the tables, and all of that. This is days in, the, in advance. But he was angry. <laughs> There it is. He was angry. In the original text, he was furious. He was beside himself. Mm. And he would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Look. Look. (laughs) These many years I've been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment any time, yet you never gave me a measly goat that I may make merry and with my friends. Mm. Okay? Stop right there. How many sons would ever say to their father, look, first sentence. He didn't even see him as his father. He didn't even love him as father. He just saw him as some sort of entity. Okay? Mm. It was almost like his, he was invisible. Mm. The caring, loving, waiting father. And so what happens? He says, uh, you didn't even give me. I, I'm entitled. Mm-hmm. I'm the older son. See, anger is about entitlement. This is my world. And see, the problem is when we leave God out, we become practical atheists. And you leave God out. He's not on the throne. He's not the one who's protecting you. He's not the one who is sa- he's going to be a safe place. So you've got to make it for your own. You've got to fight. And that's what the older son does. I might make merry with my friends, but as soon as this son of yours, he doesn't care about the brother. He has, has no understanding of the father embracing the younger son. All of this is going on, and it shows when you're angry, you're, you're like a, a, a bull seeing red. You cannot focus on anything spiritual. You cannot focus on anything uh, transcendent, anything vertical. There is no upper story. All there is is lower story, lower story, lower story. And what you got to do is just swing away. And sorry if, you're in the, sorry if you're in the path of my swinging. Mm-hmm. And he said to him, Son, you're always with me. And all that I have is yours. Mm-hmm. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again. 
is lost that he's found. Mm -hmm. See, they both were enslaved to sin. Mm -hmm. The younger brother was slave to lust. The older brother was enslaved to pride. Yes. Pride. Mm -hmm. His spiritual smugness. His arrogance. Oh, he embodies everything of Matthew 5, 21 through 26. Mm -hmm. And in this, he shows how his heart was just as dark as the younger son. Mm -hmm. But the father came out. Here's a question for you. When it says here, so he called one of his servants, and he came and drew near. His older, he was in the field, and the older son, he came and drew near to the house, and he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. How come the older brother didn't know about that? How come the older brother didn't know about the preparations? How come the older brother didn't know about the meat and the dancers and the musicians? You know why? The father knew the older brother's heart. The father knew and understood his heart was stone. His father understood that to invite him in was an exercise in futility. Mm -hmm. You see, God will not let you get away with your sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the younger the older son, when he realized the father intentionally did not invite him, mm. did not tell him. Bring him into the loop. Mm -hmm. And the initial preparations, mm -hmm. it could have struck a chord, mm. could have been a moment of conscience. I'm here to tell you there will be times where God will pass over you. Mm. There will be times, opportunities, and blessings God will pass over you. Because he says, you are like the older brother, and you have a hardened heart, you're stubborn, and there's no use. You have too much pride. Mm. You have too much spiritual smugness. You're disintegrated. You don't have integrity. Mm. And you don't pray, P-R-A-Y. You pray, P-R-E-Y. Mm. And it really breaks my heart that you're doing this. Mm. You may not have committed murder. You may not be serving time in, in prison. But guess what? You are in a prison yourself mm. because of your anger. Mm. I'll close with this unless you have something. No, keep going. I was at uh, Target. Target. Uh, let me the, we got an international audience I, I was going to clarify. Okay, okay. I call it Target because that gives it a little sophistication, uh -huh. a little French touch. Mm -hmm. But many of you know it as Target, okay? Mm -hmm. I was there earlier this week, and uh, uh, I was coming through the cashier, and there's a, a, a sweetheart of a gal. I've never met her before. Her name's Lauren, and uh, she's... I found out as I talked with her, she's 16 years old. This is her first job she's ever had. And uh, I was just saying, you're doing a good job, Lauren. Keep up the good work. And she smiled. I said, let me ask you this. Do you get angry customers? She rolled her eyes and said, oh. I said, how many of 10 customers do you get are angry? And she started to choke up. She said, about three. Mm -hmm. And she says, I don't know. I may quit this job because I can't take it. And I said, well, you can you hang in there. And she looked at me and said, thank you for being so kind, sir. Mm. That's when you know you're older. <laughs> sir. Thank you for being so kind, sir. Yes. And that's what it's about. Mm. It's about kindness. Mm. Don't treat them as a non-entity. Mm. Don't treat them like the older brother did with his father. Look, no, these are people. Mm -hmm. And they're made in the image of God. Mm. And they matter. And I just hope and pray, as Lincoln said, it takes a lot of strength to be gentle. Yes, it does. Father, thank you for uh, this uh, big bath, this big inner bath, lots of soap, lots of hot water, and um, lots of beautiful results as, uh, because of it. Lord, we thank you that your words are sharp because you want to cut through. Thank you that you care to rescue us. We ask you to rescue us from the enemy, and you do that in your words. Your words are powerful. Your words don't deviate from the truth. Yes, there's grace. There's always grace. The grace is coming to you, is asking for your help, is saying, Father, Father, Search my heart and know me. 
Show if there's any wicked way in me. And so may our friends around the world, and may we as well, every single day say, Father, show us what displeases you. Show us how we're out of a line with your own heart. Teach us how to be kind, how to be forgiving, how to make a difference in this world everywhere we go, no matter where we are, the store, the community, our families. Sometimes it's the hardest to be kind to our own families. And so we pray for kindness across the board. We pray that the, the spirit of kindness and love and gentleness, the fruit of the spirit would fill us always. Father God, I am grateful that uh, we follow one who is, uh, yes, our Savior, our King, our Lord, but such a wise and profound instructor for our soul. Thank you, Lord, that his ways are perfect and his path for us is good. God is too good to be cruel. He's too wise to make a mistake. And he's too deep to explain himself. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord, in your sovereign grace, we would trust you. There are many things that have been unfair and hurtful, and we don't like it. But it's time for us to surrender, palms up, mm -hmm. to you. There's times where we've gotten a bitter heart. We've become hardened, stubborn, and argumentative and mean-spirited. I pray, Lord, you would uh, humble us, soften us, as Hebrews 12 says, even discipline us mm -hmm. so that we can share in your holiness. Mm -hmm. For those who have the heart of Jesus, all you want to do is love Jesus more and more and more. For those who have the heart of Jesus, all you want to do is think of anyone that you have as you do inventory. Mm -hmm a grudge against, or they have a grudge against you. Mm -hmm. Do what you can to reconcile, friend. Mm -hmm. Do what you can to be a peacemaker. Do what you can to go forward in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. And God will be beaming. Mm -hmm. He will be beaming. And if any of you do not know Christ, and all of this sounds like so hard, so difficult, just come to him. Just say, Lord Jesus, I don't understand all this, but I see your purity. I see your authority. I see who you are. I want to follow you. I, I, I lay down my life and give it to you, Lord. Change me. Make me a new person. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is passing away and all becomes fresh and new. So ask him to come and to fill you, to change you, and to make you a beautiful masterpiece of his own doing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, on me. Father, we give you all the glory now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away and who is able to bring us with great joy into his glorious presence. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All glory to God. Shalom, friends. Godspeed, my friends. Godspeed. Thank you for being with us. Would you like and share this? And we pray that you will stay close to Jesus and that you will stay bright and beautiful for his glory. Yes, and as we say to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, yes, yes, yes. 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 Boom. All right, friends. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>